Hey everyone, Rascal here. And Mama, welcome to our podcast. Today we're talking about the most recent addition to the Batman Limited animated movie series, Max vs. Mutants. This third installment follows Batman and his fellow heroes, Green Arrow, The Flash, Nightwing, and Robin as they battle Mr. Freeze in his newest plan to freeze over Gotham City create giant kaju monsters out of the mutant villains. Yeah. And it wasn't Dick Grayson Robin, it was oddly enough Damian Wayne Robin, whom they aged up and made more kid friendly. Right, because clearly when you see the non kid oriented Batman movies, he's anything but kid friendly and he is the kid of the entire series. Yeah, and he's really intense, really uh fierce and yeah and then this one he's like a normal teen right which is like like is this the alternate reality it has to be so right well they do have dick grace in here of course is uh nightwing so they have at least two robins they have a third robin called red robin but he wasn't in this movie right now for me what was greatest about this movie is i was really happy to see new um DC animated movie. That was the first thing. The second thing, of course, was seeing multiple characters, like you said, in the of the Bat family: Nightwing, Damian Wayne, uh, Bruce Wayne, and some extras. But what I didn't really care for was the animation was good, but the build of the characters is really, really off. And um, oh, and Flash. Don't forget, Flash was in here also. Oh yeah, of uh, Wally West Flash. And um, the animation was good, but the way the characters look kind of struck us as off, like how they had lines that were supposed to indicate like contours, but they were just like straight lines going yeah, down. Yeah, like the they face. forgot to like erase <laughs> the guidelines and they just left it. Right. Other than that, the animation was great. It was high action. It was thrilling. Um, it was awesome. So tell them a little more about Mech versus Beauty. So it keeps going in the series of the movies where Penguin was sent off to avoid getting uh, arrested. He ends up being Arctic with Mr. Freeze. Mm-hmm. And he got makes deal with him that if he would help him get back to Gotham, he would help him this plan to freeze it over so he wouldn't have to hide from people anymore. He would just freeze the entire city and would have it all to himself. Right. And uh, he breaks out a couple of the villains like Bane and Killer Croc and Clayface and a fourth villain which we actually hadn't heard of. He was made of a green uh, goop and it was supposed to be toxic unless that's his name and we hadn't heard of him before so he was a new addition. I'm sure Bennett knows so he can tell us in the comments below. Right. <laughs> and then at first you didn't know what they were supposed to be used for but of course you got that little bit of a sneak peek before the movie start of what happens now and then you have to see what happened earlier to reach that point and he turned into these giant uh monsters immediately when they did killer croc you even thought of Gazera. <laughs> exactly <laughs> the entire time like oh they really went down they even had the roar at one point yeah they just had him demolishing the city and eventually the others grew it's like that ah, there you go and even Batman, Batman had his own little Voltron in there to fight him off. Right. Uh, just happened to have that standing by for emergencies. Okay, some great points about this movie. One was you were you were able to see the uh, relationship they actually had put between Damien and Batman, his dad. And in this version, he was more concerned about communicating with him and him liking him, which in the other one, he always acted as if he didn't care. So in this one, Alpha was telling him, you know, give him a few points. So it was Nightwing that, you know, just give him a chance. He cares more than you think he cares. He's not as aloof as he pretends to be. That was great. Number two was seeing Wally West Flash. But what I didn't like is how they made him seem like he was an idiot, which Wally West is one of the smartest characters in DC animation history, one of the most intelligent. And then the thing I really was thrown off by is normally in other incarnations, Wally and Dick are friends. You know, they're best friends, but in here, Nightwing couldn't stand Flash. Yeah. And I was not happy about that. And I guess they were saying Flash was either naive or just dim. He never caught on that he didn't like him. He always thought, oh, he's joking. Oh, he's just, that's just the way we interact. And he didn't realize that he really meant that he didn't like him. He didn't want to deal with him. So I'm going to guess it could be the fact that since being Nightwing was a way of stepping away from the Batmantle and Wally was reminded of that because 
he has Kid Flash and Robin's what he used to be and being around him reminds him of what he used to be and he doesn't want to deal with it. Or they just wanted to write in some silly uh, comic relief so they had him not get along with the Flash so they could have that straight man and the funny guy type of scenario. Because it's clear that Wally is not all that intelligent in this particular incarnation. Right. And it seems DC is starting to do that to Wally where he's not as intelligent as he was in past incarnations. Now it changes to he's only smart in specific categories and everything else he's at. Yeah, and I'm not caring for that. Wally West is one of my favorite DC characters. Now that being said, um, the movie itself was great. Mr. Freeze, you got to see another side of him. Usually every time you see him you think that he's selfish when he has these plans he's trying to flesh out you think he's being selfish or it's being because of his wife who didn't want to let go but in this one he said he just wanted to be normal and not having to wear the suit all the time right. and that's why he wanted to be cold and you were just kind of like oh so they are actually trying to make the villain somewhat human mm -hmm. in this one as well same with penguin um you understood what he was feeling because he let you know and told you so they were trying to humanize him i guess and make you have empathy for them that didn't work for all of them though because right. clayface no. no clayface didn't have really a tragic thing he just like he just wanted to kill batman bane just wanted to kill batman Croc just probably. wanted to kill batman right. that's it there was really nothing else they just wanted to kill him so they could have their way with gotham nothing more nothing less maybe exactly. when they get movies where they're start to be center stage maybe you'll start to see a little more but right now it's just they have that one goal and they're the lackeys for penguin and mr freeze and then that's it right now i did like actually i like the version of green arrow in here and it's so funny because they got billionaire plus billionaire equals zillionaire but i really liked his personality in here he's not as serious as in the live action version and he's not as i want to say as laid back as he has been in some other incarnations or wrapped up in Red Arrow. This time it's just him by himself, um, lending a hand to Batman when he needs it, really loving the city, really helping out. And it seems like they're actually uh, buds in this movie. Mm -hmm. That's the way it, you know, they've made it seem, which is good because usually, you know, they are at odds. So it's nice that actually in one incarnation, you see these two guys who have, you know, zillions of dollars that can do, you know, more for the people in the city mm -hmm. than others could working together not only financially but also um, heroically to keep the city safe right and and it's great because they can adapt that from the past incarnations we've seen especially mm -hmm. the live action so it's right. now you have to make it different from that mm -hmm. because the live action becomes so popular and it's slowly going down so now you have to reinvent Green Arrow again a little bit mm -hmm. to where he's appealing again both to kids and older audiences right. and still you know where you're interested in this character right now if you haven't figured it out mech refers to all of the Batman tech and monsters reverse refers to uh, what the villains are transmuted to once they get this goo from the, uh, Mr. Freeze, tell them more about that. Yeah, and I guess you could uh, say that was like a reference to the Ninja Turtles, but instead of turning them into mutants, which they already were, they just made them grow exponentially to whether they were like uh, Godzilla monsters. In fact, they even had a fight with a few, with uh, one or two of them, like one of the movies. Mm -hmm. So that was a shout out to that. And then of course, Batman getting his giant bat. Voltron suit and bites <laughs> off Killer Croc and Bane in right. the suit. Green Arrow has one for some reason because I guess he's rich. He it has was a nice he, twist. Yeah, he's got to spend some of it. So <laughs> He's like, I want a toy too. He's like, I want a suit too. What did you think? I wasn't going to have a suit? Right. <laughs> <laughs> and that was actually interesting to see because like, you just have that sitting there. So, of course, everyone, even Batman, needs a Voltron. So. Yes. So, um, some good voice actors in here. Um, name them. Uh, we have Roger Craig Smith as Batman. We have Chris Damalatopoulos, I think, as Green Arrow. We have, uh, actually, Yuri Lonthal was in the last movie as Red Robin, but he's not in this version. Uh, we also had, um, who else? Uh, Will Friedel as Nightwing. Yes. And many, many others. We're surprised they hadn't even had um, Troy Baker in here as well right. as one of the characters. And there were quite a few, uh, you know, voice acting stars in here. Now, great thing about Will Friedel. Now he's being Batman. He's being Fearless Ferret. He's being Nightwing. He's being 
One more. Okay, we're not going to count Lionel in the Batman story. Well. <laughs> but I mean, in the DC history, he's run think, the gamut of the, the, the Bat I characters. I think that's everybody, yeah. Yeah. So, and he's he's done Batman with Adam West. Oh, so yeah. So, Friedel is now animation royalty because he's just run the gambit. And he does this so well. His voice is identifiable immediately, but you like him in every role he voices. Somehow, some way, he fits. Mm-hmm. He, he fits and he does a great job. Yeah, it takes you a minute. It's like, oh, okay, he's doing this voice. I like, use Bumblebee as well. Like, right. okay, he's doing that voice. All right. And it takes you a minute. And, and as she mentioned, thing. Lionel in the 2011, the awesome and epic Thundercats, <laughs> which was really, really great. And we'll talk about that later. Right. Not Thunder Tubbies, <laughs> Thundercats. <laughs> But, uh, yeah, this movie was actually uh, the best one so far out of the three because we had the Monster Mayhem and we had the Animal Instinct. So each movie has a particular theme with it right. and its villain. So now we're kind of excited to see what theme are they going to do next right. for the fourth movie if there is going to be one. Right. So we'll talk about the one prior to this one. Again, this is the latest one from 2018. And it was really, really great. And it was really great to see DC Animation back in action that was adult friendly, kid friendly, relatable, mm. um, fun, it was, you know, paired with action, and that wasn't ultra violent where you were afraid to let your, you know, your kids watch or young children watch. This was a great return to DC Animation. Yes. So, uh, look forward to our other two podcasts on uh, Batman Unlimited. Yes. Animated movies. Yes, that will be like, once again, Monster Mayhem, which is the one before this, and then the first one in the series, Animal Instincts. So, we've watched them all, and we can't wait to tell you about it. So, yeah. So, join us for that. I'm Rascal Entertainment. And I'm Mom Entertainment. Have a fantastic day. Peace. And the water sitting, flashing lights. Trying to walk around, man, who the hell are you? What you want to do? My man, is on you. Man, it's on you. And in my dreams, she was my queen. A castle in the mountaintops, rivers and streams. Plucking sunlight from the sky in my pocket. Give it to you later on in the form of a locket.